Are these yeah. values supposed to be secret from the other players, or how's that? No, work? it's really not that big of a deal. It just I know Jimmy uh, probably will have a problem if his appearance isn't higher than everybody else. Oh, it absolutely My charisma is. I mean, better be uh, as high as possible. <laughs> I made it. I made it sure that his had the highest appearance. So don't worry, he, he's going to be okay. I rolled the first one for you and had a fantastic success, and then you rolled and had an incredible failure on that. So any time that I say, "Hey, I need an intelligence check," we're going to click on the intelligence thing. I don't know what that means, Vinny. If you want to punch somebody click the unarmed button if you want to hit somebody with your sword cane then hit the sword cane button sword like cane. hit points or how many points that you have of life and in the scenario we just did where i did that sword cane it did three points of damage if it hit you you'd have six points of damage uh hit points left if you lose six more you're dead do you know what's going on no like yeah it's gonna be okay yeah <laughs> are actually at WSM, a radio station in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, this is the National Life and Accident Insurance Company's radio station that they put up uh, ostensibly to bring weather, music, and news to the populace. But it's really about putting their commercials on it so that you'll purchase insurance from them. This is totally normal. This is absolutely a real place that is there in 1929. That building was there. That's a real brochure. And that's a real map of Nashville at the time. So 1929, it's October. We're going to start off the adventure where you guys are all sitting in the office over at, uh, at the radio station. In the radio station right now, you have Liesl Monarch, the office manager, who is uh, quite bitchy and considers herself the boss of everyone here, okay? Probably yeah. like some of you know. Uh, then you have a Christopher Nash. He's the engineer, the sound engineer for the station. And the guy is like MacGyver. He can fix anything. If he can't fix it, he knows somebody who can. And then, oddly enough, you got a visit from David Yor, your attorney from corporate office. And he popped by because he's got a new record he wanted you guys to hear. And he's a pretty cool guy. And every once in a while, he'll come in and you know shoot the shit because he's really into music but he's not here all the time but he just happens to be the day he comes in he's talking to Benny and y'all he's, he's saying hey look uh, man I got this really kick-ass record while I was in New Orleans I brought you a copy of this record that you can have hand you a record you put it on you start listening to the song that's playing he's talking about what a cool song it is kind of a, he calls says his name is when the levee breaks there is this woman Minnie that wrote it these two wrote this song and it's really kick-ass but the problem is you guys can't play it on the radio and the reason you can't play it on the radio is unfortunately in 1929, black musicians had a really hard time getting on the air. This is pretty commonplace. I don't like it either. But as far as why you are talking, you're all pissed about it because it's a pretty cool song. And you want to play it. Vinny, you're like, you've experienced this in the past where you played music you weren't supposed to and got the shit kicked out of you outside of the station one time in Boston. So that. you know Always. That, yeah, so you know that. that. <laughs> but he's playing the song and everything and he decides, he's, he's like, I, I left a copy. So if anybody wants to give me a spot hidden rule, they look on their uh, on their character sheet under spot hidden. I'm looking, I'm looking. Spot Spot hidden, right? Yes, yes. Which is kind of ironic that you're having trouble finding it. Jimmy's a no. Either one of you guys have a have a shot at this. We have a seventy five there. I'm still looking. I got it. I got one. Benny is no good. What about Gina? Oh fuck me. Holy shit. Okay. I'm trying to find skills. It's great. It's here. Now that is high tech. <laughs> Jimmy may have rolled several times on this one, but he did. I did. I did. I got pushing a button. Yeah, so you don't have to respond. <laughs> but for the purpose of this, I'm going to say, Jimmy, one of the things that you notice is that record that he gave you on the inner spindle of it, there is an odd looking kind of tree character that sticks out. Imagine like a stick that has several branches off of it. It's kind of really faint. It's hard to see, but just something that you notice kind of weird about it. So, uh, you know, basically, uh, David Yor hangs around for a little while and shit, but he's got things to do. So he's going to leave. And as he leaves, you got one of your regular customers comes in. There's a guy that comes in every freaking week to record his car commercial about his church services, right? So he's going to come in and do his church service again. So you guys all know this guy very well. It's a uh, Noel Holstein and uh, he, has a, he has a church here in town and everything. And he comes in and he's always doing uh, commercials for coming to church on Sunday. But today he's got something kind of special. He's going to sit down. He's going to record his sickeningly sweet message. Then he'll leave and you guys just play it on the hour, every hour. And he pays you to do this. Everything seems pretty normal. You know, when you do it, he gets in there and he, he's got a big old car salesman smile on his face and he starts doing I understand you, Reverend Noel Holstein here. Now, I want to see you all at church on Sunday, as always, but I'd like to cordially invite you all to attend a special groundbreaking ceremony for our new prayer center on Friday, October 18th, this Friday. Come early, enjoy lunch and activities for the kids and all the festivities. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your neighbors. They are all not going to want to miss this. 
So I'm going right on down Friday afternoon. We are easy to find. Just drive out towards Jackson. Take your first left after the Cumberland River Bridge. We'll be right next to that central hospital for the insane. We'll have plenty of science to help you get to us. I can't wait to see you all in person. See you there. I don't trust him. I don't know why he would say that, Benny. Oh, so, uh, you know, naturally, you know, Benny's already got an aversion to him. Now he basically slips you an envelope full of money. And uh, this time oh, it's a little thick. Now we like him again. So if you want to do like, you could do a psychology role if you wanted to, to see if you could feel something out on him. If you've got, uh, if you have a decent psychology, Vincent has a uh, 50 in it. So he may actually do pretty well at it. Where's my psychology? Okay. So yeah, he seems like a cool guy. He seems pretty up and up Benny. you don't see anything odd about him and everything. He's a little quirky, you know, and. He is awfully syrupy sweet. He's got a very nice suit on. He's got a big old smile, real, real friendly face. He's got this huge congregation in town and everybody just loves this guy. Well, so, so did Jim uh, Jones. It would remind you of that, except it's 1929. We don't, we don't know about Jim yet. Well, what if I have visions of the future? I don't know. You don't. <laughs> so uh, if you guys want to give me a listen check, oh my God, Vinny, you actually broke something in the theater. A hundred is an absolute, the worst role you can possibly do. Story uh, of my life. That's going to come back and haunt you. I don't know how that's going to manifest itself. Great. Fucked. Uh, I can't I'm going to cut it. you some slack. I can see that you guys are rolling like crazy because you only have to hit it one time. I couldn't I'm tell not, it was doing I'm anything. Not, not, yeah, I'm you not. have to look at the uh, roll <laughs> the chat window. It'll show it on there. Gina, one thing, you know, he always has this stupid ass background music going with a it's got a little fiddle and a little you know little guitar going in the background real cheesy some don't feel right to you this time you've heard it a hundred times and doing these stupid commercials but it sounded something was off but you're not sure why now the adventure starts and you tell me what you're gonna do I'll go to my library and try to figure out what that sound is that sounds familiar. So you want to go over to a library and investigate the sound? Well, I want to play some of my records to see if it pops. Ah, okay. Thank you. I thought that was really odd, but okay. Yeah, you could, because you've got old recordings of him. I mean, you've got a, a million of them from him and doing so. When you're listening to him side by side, yeah, there is something weird about it. It's just a little off. There's something that isn't quite right. It's the same tempo, but some of the notes seem to be kind of jumbled up. Is there like a secret message embedded in the recording somehow? That's a good question. You should find out about that. What should I do? Should I roll for credit rating, which is what I have really well, high for some fucking yes, that, reason? Well, you understand that you're quite wealthy in town, Jimmy. And, and, you know, <laughs> well, your mother is quite the dilettante in town. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she is a very, very popular person in town, for sure. Yeah. No. Um, Gino, find out if there's, a, if there's a demon in that music. Sniff it out. Okay, so how you? would you do that? Yeah, how would play I do it that? backwards? <laughs> you could try doing that and see what happens. Is you, it possible you know, that uh, Benny and Jimmy are still suffering from the Spanish flu i have some kind of dementia going on from this right so uh so if you're gonna play this record backwards it sounds really terrible i mean it's obviously that there's a reason why he normally plays it forward because it's just garbage it just sounds terrible but it doesn't seem anything out of the ordinary because you know you guys have snuck whiskey up to the station and tried to do this with other records without a whole lot of success in the past but that didn't seem to do anything i'm mean, gonna just give you kind of a little hint is remember that you've always got other assets with you and in this case you probably have and now i mean david just left the room and perhaps you know i don't know maybe liesel monarch knows something about about sound engineering and she could help you. Or perhaps somebody else in the room might be a better person to ask besides her. Christopher oh. Nash, the, oh. uh, Nast rather, the engineer, or uh, Liesl. So it's just you three and those two sitting in there. So you could talk to maybe Christopher Nast. He might be able to help you. Well, we should probably talk to Christopher Nast. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Show for so, show. Uh, so, you know, Christopher Nast is basically like uh, the comic book store guy of electronics and everything. He's very excited the opportunity to help you with these and everything. And he asks you a few questions about what you're trying to accomplish here. And you think there's some kind of embedded message, but that's interesting. I just happen to have a new toy I've been building here in the studio. It's called an oscilloscope. Maybe we could look at waveforms on that. And you're all looking like, what in the fuck is he yeah. talking about? I mean, Oddly enough, in 1927, first crude oscilloscope was developed. Mm -hmm. He suggested if we go back in the in, in the uh, sound lab, in the booth, maybe we can figure a way to get something out of this. You know, So if we were to go back, go have a look in the lab here, perhaps we can learn something about oh. what's going on here. So he basically sets up, uh, the, he has a record player back there, and he hooks it up to this oscilloscope and is trying to watch these squiggly little lines on a thing. And you're all like, what the hell? This is 
about the most boring damn thing in the world. So you guys are just hanging out, waiting for him to do stuff. He's dorking out. He's moving wires around and, you know, interesting, interesting. And then all of a sudden, bam, the power goes out in the room, goes completely out and, you know, blows a fuse and everything. You hear a thump. You can only assume Christopher Nass had just hit the ground. What do you do now? Make sure he's still alive. That's a good idea. You could use your body detector or you could possibly put the fuse back in and get the lights back on. Be oh, let's do that. Could. Nast is like laying on the ground. His beard is like, and all of his hair kind of just shot up all over. Nast has got a pretty impressive beard and it's like he's been shocked real bad and he's kind of convulsing a little bit. Looking at him, it looks like he's actually okay. It just when you look over the oscilloscope that he was looking at, the, the glass is shattered, pieces of it all over the place. Nast is kind of motioning over, he's pointing over at the chalkboard. Look at the chalkboard. You know, it's just a blank chalkboard right now. There's nothing, nothing to see on there. What do you want to do? Is he on the floor? He is on the floor right now. Almost unconscious? In and out of consciousness, but he was able to point at the uh, chalkboard and uh, right. he's kind of mumbling incoherently at this point. Does he want are there, me are to there draw black him lights in uh, 1927? To see if there's oh, yeah. some kind of hidden message up there. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. No, I don't think uh, uh, I don't think they have a black light at this point in time, but that's a great question. I'm going to say even if there was, you don't happen to have one with you. Know, sometimes Vinny has one jammed way, way, way up his butthole, but not today. <laughs> So, oh, not today. Liesl was just running around, just freaking out over this whole right. thing. She came in and saw him on the ground. She said, you got to do something. You got to help him. What's wrong with you people? Help him. Help him. You know, get him up. What are you doing? Mm. You know, and, you know, basically bossing around like she always does, you know, because uh, she obviously must be in charge. Right. Uh, what do you want to do? Get her shot of some sipping whiskey to calm her down. Okay. Now, remember, it's prohibition, and that's okay. Oh. You're on a radio station, so you probably have access to All it. Right. Just we bear that stop. in mind for later on. We got the juice. So you give her a, a little uh, belt of, uh, of uh, whiskey, and she sits down and calms down a little bit. It looks like Christopher is kind of coming to a little bit, but he's still kind of pointing at the chalkboard. And, give him some uh, freaking chalk. Do we have chalk? Yeah, there's chalk right on the chalkboard. Give him Go some figure. freaking so, chalk. Okay. So uh, he kind of staggers up a little little bit. And if you give him a hand to get over to the chalkboard, he is starting to draw something really odd on the chalkboard. When he gets done with the oh. chalkboard, it's this really weird pattern. And he's like, this is what I saw. And then it, the, the device just exploded. Like it, it burned this into the glass and then shattered. That's pretty freaky shit there. You don't know what to make of that. I mean, looking at it, it looks like there's some stars. There's some, I don't know what the hell that is. Now, somebody who has a decent occult skill, if they have one, uh, I don't know if anybody but he does. They can try and make a roll for it and see if they know anything about it. Love the occult, the IRL. Maybe I have, I only have a five. Can I, I try it anyway? Absolutely. You can try 25. You can, Ooh, anybody use can try. roll. The thing is, as you're staring at it, everything, it's kind of weird that the chalkboard kind of gets kind of wavy while you're looking at it. You actually start to feel a little uncomfortable as you're staring at it. It's almost like you can't stop looking at it. And I need everybody to give me a sanity check. Oh, God. <laughs> so do I press it? Did something happen? Gino, oh my Lord. Okay, Vincent, Jimmy, what do you got? I do it. Oh, oh crap. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so the two of y'all basically lost. Yeah. You got to crank it by hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the two of you guys are just dazed as hell. You know, Jimmy's looking like, what the fuck's wrong with you guys? You just, both oh. of you seem really out of it. But to click on the D6 because you failed your sanity check. You're pretty shaken up over this. Whatever it is, is it making you actually a little physically ill when you try to look at the chalk? Nast is totally freaked out. He's gone back into the back room over there, just huddled in fetal position. It's been a rough morning for him. Oddly enough, it seems like Liesl just hasn't been paying attention to anything and missed all that. So she has no idea what's going on. Yes, there is something odd about that message. Mm -hmm. When when he comes, the engineer actually comes to a little bit. He's like, why can't we just isolate the channel? I mean, we know the carrier signals in there. And he, he gets it set up and he starts playing it for you. He says, I've isolated something else that's in this message, but I'm not sure what to make of it yet. So he starts playing a something that just absolutely is not going to play at all on. Basically, it, since it's not working, there's some really awesome channels chanting of some guys. In the background, it basically says there are 13 innocents will be sacrificed on Thursday before the Dark Lord comes on Friday. And that's what the message says inside there. You've learned that the preacher has mm -hmm. got this record on here, but you're contractually obligated to play a commercial on there. What do you guys want to do? I mean, because Vinny, you're on here in a minute. It's almost top of the hour. You're supposed to be playing this song in just a few minutes. What do you want to do? Well, I don't think I want to play it. Okay. Well, you don't have to play the thing. You could put on uh, uh, something Can else. We play last week's record pretend we yeah, screwed up that, that's a good idea actually why don't you try that and see if that works you put on last week's 
records as you do from the monitor all you can hear is static the lights kind of dim in and out kind of freaking you out especially Gino and Benny Jesus is looking it's happening again well I wish I'd have thought about that because I have a it doesn't appear to be playing anything Benny uh, you, you're so startled by this even when you're talking to the radio you know, you know this is Jimmy the uh, smooth FM or AM actually in this case you don't hear anything out of the monitor nothing is playing you can see the, the dials they're moving like there should be sound coming out but nothing is coming out of it. but you do know that the radio station is just doing nothing but static at this point you don't appear to be broadcasting anything to anybody well what do you want to do do we have an engineer in the building so you've got Christopher uh, who's kind of laying in fetal position in the back room. Oh, he's no good okay all right he woke with an either headache and his butt hurt basically so <laughs> cranberry juice what is my I'm saying play another relation, record what is my uh, role in relation to Vinny's character am okay, I so, over him in any way am I in charge uh, of- so basically Vinny is the DJ okay so he's what you have is the programming manager is Gino and then yep. uh, Jimmy you I'm are the sales the, guy yeah the sales guy to go and rack up some more commercial time play that stuff, fucking man. record Vinny you're just sales uh, Gino will oh, be he's my boss. trying to tell you that because he wants the money yeah play the record yeah. the guy paid for it we got an envelope full of money play the freaking record well sales Hail is Satan. commercials Hail yeah. Satan play well, the record it's also what keeps the lights on though too I have played right. a goddamn record. I'm playing that record. I can't get it to play, so I got to play a different record. Uh, yeah. Play the devil record. <laughs> play the devil record. What could possibly go wrong? Right. I'm gonna play the goddamn record. Okay. It just comes on and like you know, normal. It's just another one of his. You know, no problem. No, Holstein's gonna have invite you all to come to this thing. Blah blah blah. Like that. Everything seems fine. Everything seems pretty normal at this point. What do you guys want to do? Let's break for lunch. Okay. I'm hungry. Well, in all seriousness, if you guys wanted to break for lunch, I guess you could. If you did, there's a diner that you guys go to all the time. You know, you got a tab that on occasion you actually pay and you make the uh, proprietor of this place just drives him freaking nuts. You know, deep down inside, he loves you. We're over here at the bar and grill that's not a bar anymore because of prohibition. Now they're just soft drinks. Uh, Beauregard Timpanist is the owner here. And then uh, TK Bloomers is a waitress here that you all know. The two of them are like legendary gossip hounds uh, when they're together. If they start talking to run for your lives because they'll be at it forever. When you guys step into the restaurant, you can't believe what's happening here. All of the people that are in there are all hitting one another, breaking shit. You've got both uh, Beauregard and TK Bloomers ducked down behind the counter and everything, and people are just going ape shit in the room, just going absolutely crazy. So what do you want to do? Did we bring the uh, envelope that we got for playing the ad? I don't know. Did you? Yes, we did. Okay. So we'd like to start throwing some of the excess cash in the air into the diner, see if we can distract everybody. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay, why don't you give me, give me like a persuade me. role? I, I, okay. I love when people come up with something I'd never freaking think of. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you're at money in the air. It doesn't seem to be doing any good at all. Uh, maybe there's Can something I shoot else. Can my you pistol could. in the air? Yes. Yes, you could. You, you fire a couple rounds in the ceiling and everybody just kind of stops and kind of looks at you, kind of stunned, like looking at one like the hell's going on. What just happened? You know, uh, Beauregard steps up from behind the counter. is like, everybody get the hell out of here. Take this shit outside. He's very upset. Uh, TK is just beside herself. She would have said, what the fuck is this? She's out back. She's having to smoke. She's saying, look, I don't know what happened. We were listening to Vinny. The radio went dead for a little while. So we turned up the radio real loud thinking something was wrong with it. And all of a sudden you know that stupid Holstein guy with the stupid commercial it comes on like really loud all of a sudden somebody got mad about that word took a swing at Beauregard he drops down under the counter next thing we know it's a fucking all-out fight everybody's beating the crap out of one another it didn't make any sense at all it was just crazy look at you guys like it's a good thing you guys showed up because I, mean, I don't know what would have happened are we supposed to be doing something now you tell me we want to discontinue what they're hearing it's making them crazy it's done i said we run out of the building you know that the people have stopped they're not fighting them, so. okay okay am i allowed to feel up the waitress no you're not uh, you're gonna, oh, no no you're gonna probably <laughs> regret that got a mean <laughs> left <hook. laughs> so you know Beauregard's just he's like man really appreciate you you you're coming in saving the day <laughs> Uh, Can I feel up Beauregard over yes, here? Yes, you normally do. I wasn't going to say anything, but he he is kind of into that. So he gives you some, you know, some free uh, lunch or whatever, and uh, just thanks you uh, for it. And they start trying to clean up the mess that, uh, you know, all the broken shit all over the place. That was pretty weird, man. Yeah, that's think? whacked yeah. out. I think we got to go talk to a preacher dude and find out what he's doing. Why is he poisoning the airway, making people fight? Okay. If you want to go and see the preacher, they, he does have an enormous church that's uh, in, uh, you know, closer to downtown. You guys are out 
kind of in the sticks where the tower is and the restaurant is. But yeah, you could drive over there. You wanted to go and, and uh, see what's going on. Uh, now, well, I don't want to Jimmy, speak for everybody. Is that a good idea? I don't know, guys. Well, I'd, also, I'd also want to know where he got that music from. Yeah, I mean, it's possible he, he has no idea either. Right. I have a cousin who attends that church and is most familiar with that guy. Oh, okay. Well, you could talk to him too. Okay. See, now, okay. So Gino is playing this right. He just came out to pull that out of his ass, but it's good because it goes along with the story. Since he said he had one, I'm good with that. You know, he didn't have to have it on his character sheet. If it's it's very plausible, but big town, sure, his cousin goes to that church. Mm-hmm. Well, let's go see him. Okay. Hey, uh, Gino. Boomer. Yeah, cousin Boomer. It's Monday afternoon, you know, just after lunchtime, and you guys start driving to go see, or you stop to see the cousin first or going to the church first? We should cousin, uh, check the cousin, cousin first. Yeah. So, yeah, and he's he's actually pretty close by uh, where the church is, only a few blocks away. So you start trying to make your way there. As you're trying to drive there, I mean, you're seeing a lot of like car accidents, people like laying on the ground, looks like they've been fighting and stuff. It's pretty, pretty weird. I wouldn't call it a war zone, but it's pretty fucked up. As you're driving by, you see police cars pulled over. You all recognize Robert McCready, detective that uh, you often guys work with. You know, he always brings oh, you. Oh, yeah. That, he's, that guy's a really corrupt. Nice, he's, he's a really nice guy. He's corrupt. Yeah, he, he may be willing to be. You know, Morally bankrupt. Yeah, see, he might be, but uh, just a nice guy. And he's kind of dealing with a traffic accident in front of him, and he kind of waves you to him. Real, hey, come here, come here. I mean, you guys can keep going, or you can talk to him. It's up to you. Oh, yeah, we should talk to him. But shout. So he comes up and he's like, guys, I don't know what the hell is going on. You guys got to put this on the radio. You got to tell people to be careful. I mean, something, something's crazy going on. All these people are getting angry all of a sudden. You guys have any idea? Should we, should we tell them it's because Vinny insisted on playing that record? We can do. Yeah, I agree with Jimmy. <laughs> you guys made me play that record. So what does Bob say? Okay, so somebody give me a persuade <laughs> role because you just said something pretty bizarre uh, to somebody. <laughs> I'm saying persuade. Jimmy, was that your persuade? Oh my God. Yeah, I think so. How'd I do? Okay, yeah, you did badly. Oh, look at uh, that. Hey! You know, pulls one out of there. Okay, so luckily, Yay! Gina was able to, to get a little bit of your point across to him. Robert's very confused, though. You know, he's kind of scratching his head like, you're saying that Vinny made y'all play this record, and you're saying that this record, the preacher did, made all these people yeah. fight? Well, and see, the thing is, you know, Robert knows you guys, and he's known Gino since, you know, since they were kids and everything, so he's got a little bit of credibility with him, but he also wonders, you know, whether or not, you know, you guys have gotten into the cocktails this afternoon. Mm. It doesn't look like he's buying it. At least he's oh. not going to take you to jail or anything. At this yeah, that's, so he's not good. This story is pretty out there. <laughs> I don't think anybody in their right mind would go along with the story. Yeah, we got to go somewhere, somewhere else. So you, you start making your way back over to the cousin's house now, and you're still mm-hmm. seeing a, a little bit more stuff. It's not anarchy. The streets aren't on fire, and everybody's you know dying in front of you. But there are obviously signs of minor car accidents and people yelling at one another as you're going. And you know, you guys have the the station does have a, a loop that plays when Vinny's not in the booth comes up on the hour again and oh, the song shit. starts playing on the radio Little again slug. in the car. So what do you want to do? Any chance it's going to have a binary like now it's going to turn it off effect or is it just going to make everybody crazier? It's hard to say. You know, as the song starts to play, it actually kind of just kind of draws you in. You really start wanting to pay more attention to what the song's doing. It's got a beat, something you can dance to. Should I hit a sanity check again? Well, yeah, I mean uh, like, <laughs> yeah, I think at this point all three of you got to make a sanity check. I was really thinking that you would turn it off. I already off, lost but, three points doing this. You know, you're in the car listening to the radio. Could have just like the radio off, but that's okay. You can, everybody take a sanity check. I'm going insane. Okay. The membrane. It's oh, the same, okay. Brain. All right. Well, it says I have 35. Oh, boy. Look at you go. Yeah, you're in good shape. Yeah. You're pretty freaked out about this until somebody who, you know, got their shit together turns off the radio and it's kind of slapping you. Know, Dude, it's okay. Just chill out. Chill out. It's okay. I don't know what word they use in 1929. You know, you know what's weird? You're like looking around when that's playing. There's a lot of people upset, but there's a lot of people that aren't upset. There's a lot of people that are just going about their business. Everybody listens to the radio. It's the only one in town right now. How is it affecting the animals? Oh, boy. That's a great question, actually. There's always a stray dog around and stuff and everything. When you see them, they don't seem to be bothered by it at all. I have an uncanny skill that every time I look at a dog that's going to the bathroom, I get it right when it's yawning. And- <laughs> And shitting every right. time. So where does that on my character sheet? Probably spot hidden, I think. That's a, that's what I'd go with. You know, <laughs> so, um, just the dog's name is Spot, right? <laughs> wow, <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> It's a very astute of you. Sorry. Sorry. So, uh, Let's keep going. Some people are upset and some people are not upset. 
You make your way over to cousin. Boomer. Tom. Okay. Well, we go over to Boomer's house. You knock on the door and he opens the door and Boomer's like, hey, man, great to see you guys. Hey, come on in, man. Do you guys want some iced tea or something? I've been meaning to call you, Gino. You're going you're gonna to come out with me on Friday. We're going to go over to Reverend Holstein's going to do that new prayer center. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to make our old church look small compared to the big we're going to build. You guys going to come? No fucking way. Somebody. I'm going to send one of these two guys. No, not it. Well, Vinny so was the one that created this, so he needs to go. Yeah.